On the other side of that is a whole new area that you get to wire your brain any way you choose. What thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? If people understand the what and the why, the how gets easier. A lot of people don't know what to do. They have no formula that's scientific and practical. If nerve cells that fire together wire together, the nerve cells that no longer fire together no longer wire together. And mm -hmm. if you stick with it, and I, we can tell you this, that sooner or later that thought is going to start to have a weakening effect on your mind until ultimately it's no longer going to be there because you no longer paid attention to it no longer accepted it, no longer believed it, no longer surrendered to it. And most people, when they get to this point, they think, I'm doing my meditation wrong. And I always tell them, no, 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 no. You're actually doing it right. That's what I want you to see. That's staying in the way between you and your happiness. On the other side of that is a whole new area that you get to wire your brain in any way you choose. There's an unlearning process before the relearning process. There's a breaking a habit of the old self and a reinvention of a new self. You gotta prune synaptic connections and then you gotta practice sprouting new ones. You gotta unfire and unwire, you gotta refire and rewire. You gotta deprogram and reprogram. You gotta lose your mind and create a new one. And you have to unmemorize emotions that keep you connected to the same familiar past and then recondition the body to a new mind and to a new emotion. So then that process, if there's a formula to apply, if you're sitting in a meditation and you have something to do and you, your body starts going, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, and it's my ex-wife, it's my whatever, and you, you go like this to your body. Okay, okay, now listen, you settle down and you know exactly what to do and you tame the animal, you tell it to settle, stay, and relax <laughs> it back into the present moment. That's a victory. Yeah. And then if the body starts going, I got to get up, I got to check my cell phone, I got to go, I got a meeting, I'm busy. And you notice that your body's habituated into the same predictable future and you settle your body back down into the present moment. Now you're executing a will that's greater than those unconscious programs. And that's a victory. Mm -hmm. And if you keep doing this over and over again, just like training an animal, the body's going to stay. It's going to surrender to a new mind. And when that occurs... Mm. There's a liberation of energy and the person relaxes into the present moment. That's the unknown. The familiar past is the known. The predictable future is the known. The only one place left is the sweet spot of that generous present moment. Now, let's get the person so familiar with their unconscious thoughts that when it comes, they don't respond to them. So aware of their habits and behaviors. So uh, conscious of the emotions that they typically feel in a waking day, they would never go unconscious to that emotion again. And you say to the person, well, what thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? And mm -hmm. with intention and attention, if we showed you how mm -hmm. to do that, nerve cells that fire together, wire together. Just take a little repetition, a little presence. You start installing the hardware. Keep doing it. It's going to become a software program. What does that mean? That's going to be the new voice in your head that says you can do it. If you study the research in neuroscience, mental rehearsal, installs neurological hardware in your brain to look like you already did it. So if you keep doing that, you install hardware, practice it and rehearse it. It mm. becomes a software program, which means you start behaving that way. Now, here's mm. the challenging part. Can you teach your body emotionally what the future reality that you want to live in feels like before it happens? Now, this is very difficult if you've been conditioned into believing something in your outer world has to change to make away, take away the emptiness or the lack to make you feel differently. This is saying actually feel the emotion before it happens and don't wait for the experience to occur. Teach your body what the feeling will be before it occurs. If the environment signals the gene and the end product of an experience in the environment is an emotion, you're signaling the gene ahead of the environment and genes make proteins and Proteins yeah. are responsible for the structure and function of your body, and the expression of proteins yeah. is the expression of life. So teach the body emotionally to self-regulate, to believe it's living in an environment that's flourishing, that's wonderful. Keep yeah. practicing it, and it'll become familiar to you. And the process then creates a new identity, and it's not difficult once you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. And the more yeah. you combine all those different branches of science and make it in a simple way, to understand, if people understand the what and the why, 
the how gets easier because you can assign yeah. meaning to what you're doing and it becomes instrumental. So get a group of people, a thousand people, fifteen hundred people, two thousand people into a room, teach them that information, whether they're coming for wealth, their health, a relationship, a new career, a mystical experience, get them all together and teach them and measure what can take place in a one week period of time. And I assure you, that's yeah. more than 75% of the people that go through and go all in and retreat from their lives and remove the same stimulation from their environment and not be in the same conditions and teach them that information and give them numerous opportunities to apply it, and numerous mm. opportunities to get beyond themselves. Mm. All you need is that first person that stands on the stage and says, hey, I walked in here with Parkinson's disease. I have no idea what happened, but... I'm not trembling anymore. And boy, that last thing, just something clicked for me. And the person in the audience was watching the four minute mile right in front of them and going, wow, that guy looks like he's not a vegan. He doesn't look like he's particularly in shape, but his Parkinson's went away. And wow, I mean, if he could do it, I could do it. And somebody else changes their belief. And now that's a footprint in consciousness. Get enough people doing yeah. that. By yeah. the end of the week, you're going to see things. We've seen blind people, seen deaf people hearing, not wow. once, not twice. Really? We've seen people with strokes for 10 years lift their arms up again. We've seen people step out of wheelchairs, people on crutches, drop their crutches. I mean, you see the body literally recalibrates to a new mind. And they're not intentionally trying to do anything. They're just becoming somebody else. But the process wow. of overcoming is the process of becoming. And if you teach people yeah. that formula and you get just one or two people doing it, it's just going to become an infection and it's going to wellness and it's going to spread just like disease. Please engage with this video by liking, commenting, and sharing. Subscribe to stay updated. For more amazing content, check out our next video.